the two triangles are congruent and then give the congruent statement, meaning write the names of the triangles with all the vertices in the correct order and then list all of the other corresponding parts. So we don't need to list the ones that they've already given us. We can see that those are uh, congruent, but we can list off the other ones that they didn't give us because right now all we have is side and then angle and then side. We know it's side, angle, side because the if you write side, angle, side, you see that the angle is in the middle of the sides and they call that included and that is the included angle. So uh, we're dealing with side angle side here. That's the congruence. Uh, the reason that they're congruent, the reason that we know this. So how do we write the congruence statement? Well, we're going to say triangle. Um, and I'm going to say K, L, J. It doesn't really matter what uh, order we list those in. What matters is that then when we list the second triangle, we're listing all the vertices in the correct order. And we can just see that this vertex and K and O are corresponding. I can see that because we have this marked angle um, with it right here. And then we follow it down through the one with a single angle uh, side mark uh, or segment mark. And then we get to K. So we go from here, from that one angle we know, through that one segment mark side, and that's O. So we're going to list that as, actually, let me get those marks out of there first. And so we'll list those as triangle O. And then what corresponds with L? L is that marked angle at the top, so M corresponds with that. And then going down through the side with the second angle, or rather the second segment marks to N. Okay. And you can have named that in any way, as long as that what you have is K corresponding with O, L corresponding with M, and J corresponding with N. So we've got K, L, J, and triangle O, M, N. Now, how do we list all of the other corresponding parts? Well, we've got one other side that we need to list, and that's K, J. So we'd say side K, J is congruent to... And it's obviously congruent to this side here, but we've got to put the vertices in order. So looking back at our congruence statement, what corresponds with K? O. So we're going to list that first. Then what corresponds with J? N. So O and going towards each other like that. Okay. So we then say O, N. And then we need to name the angles. We say angle K is congruent to and what does it correspond with? It corresponds with angle O. Also, angle J is congruent to whatever it corresponds with, and it corresponds with angle N. Those are the three parts that were not explicitly named or explicitly um, shown to be congruent. We had three parts. There's six parts total, so we had to name the other three parts. So, yep, so we can, uh, and I might as well just write up here, we'll write that it's side, angle, side. That is the reason we know they're congruent. And we're done.